It's inspired countless works of art and literature, and I'm sure you've had your own fantasies of stumbling across a mysterious item that turns out to be worth a fortune. Secret treasure deliberately hidden hundreds of years ago, stolen treasure never to be seen again, and priceless objects that fell victim to the ravages of time and war. Here are some of the greatest lost treasures of the world. One of the most legendary hidden treasures is that of the notorious 18th century pirate, Blackbeard, who amassed a huge fortune by stealing gold and silver from Spanish ships sailing from South America. But no one seemed to know where the loot went. Amaro Pargo was another pirate from the same era who wrote in his will that he hid a treasure chest in his home that was full of jewelry, pearls, precious stones, and paintings. His Canary Islands home has been ransacked many times over the years, but nothing has ever been found. In 1885, a pamphlet titled The Beale Papers was published by an unknown author and detailed the story of how a mysterious adventurer named Thomas Beale discovered a mine in current day Colorado full of gold and silver. The pamphlet contained three sets of cipher texts that supposedly described where Thomas Beale hid the treasure, estimated to now be worth $43 million. Codebreakers and fortune seekers have dedicated their lives to getting their hands on the treasure, although most historians believe the whole thing was a hoax. $200 million worth of treasure was reportedly removed from Lima, Peru in 1820. The Spanish army commissioned respected British Captain William Thompson to transport the riches to Mexico by ship. But Thompson and his crew turned pirate, killed the guards on board and buried the treasure somewhere off current day Costa Rica. Another potential treasure trove that was deliberately hidden is Genghis Khan's tomb. Historians agree that the tomb most likely exists, but the people of Mongolia want it to remain a mystery. Genghis Khan unified the Mongols and led his fierce army to form an enormous empire that stretched from the Pacific Ocean to current day Ukraine, before he died in the year of 1227. Unlike other great leaders of history, Genghis Khan did not want an elaborate tomb constructed. In fact, he might have gone to extreme lengths to keep his final resting place a secret. An account from the Italian explorer Marco Polo describes how funeral attendees and the 2,000 slaves who constructed the tomb were killed by soldiers, who were then in turn killed by another group of soldiers. Another tale states that Genghis Khan's grave was stampeded over by hundreds of horses, and then trees were planted over the site. None of this is confirmed, but even with the use of satellite imaging, the burial site remains undiscovered. For many Mongolians today, Genghis Khan is a hero and honoring his wishes is more important than finding his treasure. In 1947, a goat herder in the desert near Jerusalem accidentally stumbled upon what would become one of the most important archaeological discoveries ever made. The Dead Sea Scrolls consist of thousands of written fragments of ancient Hebrew manuscripts that are dated from the 3rd century BCE to the 1st century CE. The texts are written on parchment and papyrus, but one scroll stood out because it was written on copper. Unlike the other texts, the Copper Scroll was not a literary work, but a list of 64 locations where various items of gold and silver were hidden. The language and writing style are also unusual, and as a result, translation has been difficult. One passage reads, 900 talents are concealed by sediment towards the upper opening at the bottom of the big cistern in the courtyard of the peristyle. A talent is an ancient measure of weight between 20 to 40 kilograms. So if the translation is correct, 27,000 kilos of valuables are potentially hidden in this secret location alone. To this day, scholars debate the meaning of the Copper Scroll, and many theories about the treasure's whereabouts have floated around for decades. The most popular theory is that the scroll is referring to antiques recovered and hidden during the destruction of the Second Temple by the Roman army in the year 70 CE. However, no one has deciphered where the treasures are located or if they still even exist. But that hasn't deterred the many archaeologists and treasure hunters who have flocked to Jerusalem over the decades. During World War II, the German army carried out what is known as the Nazi plunder. Massive organized lootings of museums, government buildings and personal residences across Europe. As Allied troops closed in and the war was coming to an end, 
It is believed that some senior Nazi officers hid their gold and other spoils in metal boxes at the bottom of Lake Toplitz in the Austrian Alps. In 1959, divers discovered 700 million pounds of counterfeit British notes in the lake. The fake cash was part of a plan to trigger inflation and weaken Britain's economy. Nobody actually knows if there is any gold at the bottom of Lake Toplitz, but that didn't stop many search attempts over the years. The Austrian government imposed a ban on search exhibitions in the 1960s after two divers died, but in 2005, an American team was allowed to use their advanced technology for one last search. All they found was a thick layer of logs. There is a lot of uncertainty surrounding the total value of assets stolen during the Nazi plunder. It is estimated that 20% of the art in Europe was looted by the Nazis, and many notable pieces are still missing. Hundreds of thousands of valuable everyday items such as china, crystals, and silver have still not been returned to their rightful owners. In April 1945, a significant discovery of hidden stolen treasure was discovered in the Merkur's salt mine in central Germany. Inside were thousands of bags and cartons of German and foreign currency, gold bars, gold coins, gold rings, silver, and other valuables, including artwork. In the late 1990s, US investigations into the missing assets revealed that Germany transferred hundreds of millions of dollars to neutral countries through the Swiss National Bank. Most of it was never recovered by the Allies. A 1998 Swiss commission estimated that the Swiss National Bank held $440 million of Nazi gold, worth about $8 billion today. Over half of it was looted. Then there are treasures that were stolen through elaborate heists, inside jobs, and just straight up mysteries. Treasures worth millions taken from their homes, never to be seen again. The Patiala necklace was made up of almost 3,000 diamonds and would have been worth $30 million in its original state. It was designed and made by Cartier in 1928 for Bunpinda Singh, who was the Maharaja or ruler of Patiala, a state in the British Empire in India. The necklace went missing from the Royal Treasury in 1948 after India gained independence. There was no sign of it for 34 years. In 1982, its 235 carat centerpiece diamond turned up at an auction in Geneva, but bidding didn't reach the reserve price of $3 million so it disappeared once again with its anonymous owner. In 1998, another part of the necklace was found in the second-hand jewelry shop in London, but most of its large rubies and diamonds were missing, leading to the theory that it had been stolen by the British at some point. The Imperial Easter Eggs, or Fabergé Eggs, are the 50 or so intricate jeweled eggs that belong to the Russian Tsars. They were created between 1885 and 1917, and are each worth millions. However, imperial gold and other treasures, including Fabergé eggs, went missing after the palaces were pillaged during the Russian Revolution. In 2012, an unnamed man in the US paid $14,000 for a gold egg he found at an antique shop. He opened up the egg and found a Vashar and Constantin watch inside. He decided to Google his find and collapsed when he realized that he had found an 1887 birthday present of Tsar Alexander III. It was purchased by Watsky, a British antique dealer, for $30 million, making it the most expensive timepiece ever sold. Most of the other Fabergé eggs are now on display in museums or privately owned, but six eggs are still missing. Erika Marini was an Austrian violinist virtuoso, whose most prized possession is now on the FBI's top 10 art crimes list. Her violin of choice was a $3 million Stradivarius that was made in 1727 and gifted to her in 1924. Stradivarius string instruments became famous for their exceptional sound quality and are among some of the most valuable collector's items. In 1995, Erika Marini's violin, along with other valuable paintings and music scores, was stolen from her New York City apartment. She died at age 91 just a few days later and never knew about the theft of her most treasured possessions. Van Gogh, Picasso, Vermeer, Monet. You'd think that paintings by some of the most renowned artists in the world would be kept very secure, but works by all of these painters have been stolen and gone missing. The largest art theft in history sounds like something straight out of an Ocean's Eleven sequel. 
$500 million worth of artwork was stolen from the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston on March 18, 1990. Just after midnight, fire alarms went off in different rooms of the museum. Two police officers arrived and told the two guards on duty that they were responding to the disturbance. One of the policemen appeared to be wearing a fake mustache. The guards allowed the police officers into the security office when suddenly they were both forced against the wall and handcuffed. The police officers revealed they were actually thieves, then wrapped duct tape around the heads and eyes of the guards. The thieves then stole 13 works of art, including Vermeer's The Concert, which is considered to be the most valuable missing painting in the world. Paintings and sketches by Rembrandt, Degas, Monet, and Flink were stolen as well as two relatively valueless sculptures. The FBI's current theory on who was behind the heist focuses on the Boston Mafia, but the case remains unsolved despite incentives of reduced prison sentences and a $10 million reward. Today, empty frames hang in place where the stolen artworks once were. The saddest category is probably the treasures that are now simply gone due to the passage of time unfortunate circumstances, or deliberate destruction. In 1511, the Flor de la Mar, a 400-ton Portuguese sailing ship, sank off the coast of the Indonesian island of Sumatra. On its final journey, it carried various treasures plundered from the Royal Palace of Malacca, which is now part of modern-day Malaysia. Contemporary treasure hunters believe that the loot is worth one to three billion dollars and includes 200 chests filled to the brim with diamonds, rubies, emeralds, coins and jewelry, 80 tons of gold bars, four life-size lions made out of solid gold, and jewelry-encrusted furniture. The ship ran into a storm on its way back to Portugal and sank. 400 men died and five were rescued. There has been no shortage of search attempts over the centuries. Even as late as 1992, when American archaeologist Bob Marks claimed to have found the wreckage before his project was shut down by authorities. However, eyewitnesses from the time reported that most of the valuables had been recovered by locals or washed ashore, so there may not even be anything left to find. The Amber Room was called the Eighth Wonder of the World, and was one of Russia's most sacred artifacts. It was constructed over many years in the 1700s for the king and queen of Prussia, a former German state. It was decorated with six tons of fossilized tree resin and was known to dazzle and mesmerize its visitors, including the Russian Tsar, Peter the Great. In 1716, it was decided that the Amber Room would be gifted to Russia to forge an alliance between the two states. In 1941, the Nazis invaded the Soviet Union and Hitler had his sights set on the Amber Room which he believed was an artwork that belonged to Germany. The curators of the Amber Room desperately tried to disassemble and hide the room, but German soldiers found it, tore it down and shipped it to Germany in 27 crates. The Amber Room was reinstalled in a castle on the Baltic coast where it was displayed and studied for two years. In August 1944, Allied bomb raids destroyed the region and turned the castle into ruins. And just like that, the Amber Room was gone. The sarcophagus of the pharaoh Menkura, the builder of the Third Pyramid of Giza, was taken by British merchants and lost somewhere in Spanish waters when their ship was wrecked during a storm. Legendary 13th century samurai swords and other weapons were stolen or destroyed during the US occupation of Japan in World War II. In the 1920s, one of the most important collection of fossils was discovered near Beijing. The Peking Man was the remains of a very early human ancestor who lived half a million years ago. In late 1941, researchers agreed to transport the nearly 200 fossils to the US for safekeeping, but they disappeared somewhere on the journey. They may have been destroyed by Japanese soldiers or possibly still exist in secret in the US. Either way, casts were made of the fossils so they can still be studied. The Great Bell of Damazetti a massive house-sized bell that belonged to a 15th century Buddhist monk turned king of Myanmar, was stolen by Portuguese warlords and is now lost in a river under 8 meters or 26 feet of mud. The mysterious $20 million, 137 carat Florentine diamond was discovered over five centuries ago and has been owned by dukes, popes, an Indian king, Portuguese governor and Austrian empress. The diamond was smuggled out of Austria during the First World War, but has since vanished. 
it was most likely secretly cut into smaller stones so it could be sold off without attracting too much attention. Just 20 years ago in April 2003, looters ransacked the National Museum of Iraq as a reaction to the US invasion. 15,000 artifacts were stolen or destroyed in 36 hours. Less than half of these have been recovered. The museum promised amnesty for returned items and a huge international effort was made to intercept items that went up for sale. The thousands of artifacts, some dated from before 2000 BCE, remain missing. In March 2022, the cargo ship Felicity Ace caught fire and capsized in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. On board were almost 4,000 luxury or high-value vehicles, including 85 Lamborghinis, 190 Bentleys, 1,200 Audis, and 1,100 Porsches. The estimated damage caused by the cargo loss is $300 to $400 million. But not all treasure is historical artifacts, gold, or diamonds. The texts of roughly 3,000 plays from the age of Elizabethan theatre are considered lost, including works by William Shakespeare, the first feature-length narrative film, The Story of the Kelly Gang, premiered in Australia in 1906. At the time, it was the longest field ever made with a runtime of just over an hour. The film was made in Melbourne, which is also where we make these videos, and depicts the exploits of the real-life Australian bushranger and outlaw Ned Kelly. Today, only about 20 minutes of fragments from the film still exist. Perhaps the greatest loss to our collective human knowledge and culture is the contents of the Library of Alexandria. The ancient library was established in around 200 BCE with the goal of collecting all the knowledge in the world under one roof. The project attracted the greatest thinkers of ancient Greece and may have housed hundreds of thousands of scrolls and multiple classrooms and lecture halls. Scribes would copy texts from every single ship that docked in Alexandria, and book hunters would travel around the Mediterranean and search for new texts. The library thrived for over 300 years until Julius Caesar led a siege of the city and burned down parts of the library. Scholars continued to visit the library for centuries, but as the city changed and different rulers introduced new religions, the knowledge contained in the library was seen as threats and eventually, the entire structure and its contents were destroyed. Some believe the destruction of the library set humanity back a thousand years, but the reality is, we'll never know. Early access to videos, discussions, polls, and behind-the-scenes blog posts are all on our Patreon.